How's it going everybody? My name is Charlie Thompson and today I'm going to be covering how to create these rain droplets. So we're just going to bounce out of this and we're going to go straight into Houdini now. So first of all what you want to do is you want to add in a grid. I jump into this. I'm going to make the rows and columns roughly around about 500 each. Um, we might have to change that down when we come to the simulation as it does take a lot of time. So next, what you want to do is we want to add in a transform just in case we want to move it around afterwards. Uh, now we're going to add in a scatter. So you got a bit of coding to do here, nothing too crazy. So first of all, you want to come to the global seed and you just want to put in a dollar sign F so that's frame range so as you go through each point will change so what we want to do now is we want to change the total count so if we just delete this we're going to add in bracket rand bracket again then we're going to put in dollar sign ff um, out of bracket now what we need to do is we need to times this by five so we put in the times uh, by five and then you want to finish that bracket off and we're going to make sure that when we have all the points on if i show you now if you got to view this real quick so you can see the points here i am going to number them like that so at the moment if we scroll through we've got a load of random points popping up at every different point uh, on the frame we do want to make sure this is, we don't have it as zero, so we're going to plus one onto this as well. So there we go. We can always come back and change the amount that we have in here. We can always change this down to like three, um, or we can change it to four. So for the moment, we'll leave it at four. So now if I show you this, we actually, if we play it through, every frame has a different scatter which is what we need. So um, next we want to add in a point vot. And the first input we want to put it into the transform and the second one into the scatter. So what you're going to do is we're going to view this and we're going to open it up. I am going to get rid of that. There we go. Now I'm just going to expand this out so you can guys can see it a little bit better. First of all, what we want to do is we want to add in a near point. And our position is going to go into position. Our input is actually going to go into the second one, which is where with points uh, the scatter node is. Uh, if we jump back out, the second one here, input has gone into the scatter. Next, we want to add in a input uh, point attribute. So we're going to put that down there. The file is going to go into the output two, and the point is going to go into the near point. So we've got the first two nodes in there. We are now going to add in a subtract. I'm going to bring this up here. First one, we're actually going to bring down to the result. Second one, we're going to put over to the point here. We're now going to add in a length. And we're going to connect that there, and we're going to output this at a, um, a bind export. I'm going to move the import into the length and so we're going to change this to debug. And um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to jump back out and we're just going to visualize it. So we're going to type in visualize and we're going to connect that in here. At the moment, if we just jump back out, um, you'll see that you got four different colors. Um, and that's because we haven't actually changed anything in the visualize. So we're going to change it to um, change the attribute to debug. Um, and now you can already see that where each point is, um, we actually have a bit of a dark color and then it kind of like fades out into the red. We are going to change the color type to ramped attribute as well. So um, yeah, you can see where the red is here is where it's definitely not going to affect it. Uh, where the blue is, is where we need it to actually kind of like shoot up a little bit. So we're going to basically deform the geometry. Wherever this point is, um, 
on the grid, it needs to be a certain height up. So when we add in the ripple effect, um, it'll work for us. Um, I'll get to that when we actually get to the dot network. It'll explain itself a little bit better. Uh, but we haven't finished with the point bop, so we're going to jump back in here. Uh, I'm also going to expand it again. So we need to finish this off. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a add. I'm going to move the first input to the point here. We're now going to add in a fit to range, which we're going to put in the first one here into the length. And now we need to actually add in a ramp as well. So these are all basically for the settings. Um, ramp uh, parameter. Uh, first input there. So we can go back out of this and we can change all these settings. Um, I'll go through them in a second with you. Uh, we're going to change the color attribute to spine ramp. So we're now going to add in a multiply. Let's place that down there. Um, first input, we need to add in a constant. And we need this to be a vector. And we need to change it so um, y axis is going up by one. So we get the droplets um, deformed onto our grid. So this second input goes into the ramp. And to finish this off, we just need to add the input into there and the last bit into the position. So we can now jump out of this and it'll just show this grid, um, nothing too special here. If we come over to the fit and we just bring this down a little bit. Uh, we also bring the max distance down too. Uh, we need to change the ramp as well. If we jump out of this real quick, um, you'll see the ramp here. If we bring the, if we put a point here, and we also get this point up here. I'm just going to delete that one because I know. So here we go. You'll see there's the points over here. If we just move these down a little bit more, just like so. It's fab. Um, now jump back into the um, point bop. And we're going to change our range. So we're going to change it to roughly around about 0.2. Uh, nothing too crazy. You can change this afterwards. Uh, max distance. We're going to bring this all the way to 1. So at the moment we've got a bit of a point. We can change this around a little bit. So what you'll notice is they're all pointing down. And that is because we need to actually change the um, destination min to 1. And the max to zero and there we go so we got them up now and that is our first stage and if we just play this back you'll see they all appear now we can go to the fun bit and actually add in our dop network so if we jump into this now all we'll have is the output which is fine now we can add in our ripple effect. So we got the uh, ripple object uh, which goes up first and then we got the ripple solver and what we'll do is we just connect those into there like that. We're going to go back to the first frame. So if we just play this back now it's got its automatic ripple effect added in as well as its um, its own default geometry here. So we don't want this. Uh, this is the rest and this is the deformed. So this is just the plain grid and this is the deformed position of the geometry uh, which we have created. So if we back out to the dot network, we can actually change them here. Um, so if we change the rest, um, if we change the rest of the rest, which would be the actual transform and the other one would be the point VOP. So let's back out here. We're going to change the rest to the transform and the SOP path to the VOP. So where is the VOP? The VOP is here. So if we play this back now, what you'll notice is it's only keeping the first frame. We actually don't have all the other frames within this. Um, and to get those, if we just pause this and go back to first frame, we actually need to change these round. So if we just copy the first one, paste the into the rest, and we're going to just 
find a transform there. So if we play it back now, still not doing it, and that's because we need to add in the used deform rest. So if we play that back now, so there you go, each frame is showing the ripple effect. Um, we can actually go in and change a couple of these, uh, make it so they're not going too far out, um, cut a bit more detail to it if we wanted to. Um, at the moment, I think there's way too many going on around here. So, um, first of all, we can actually come into the Ripple Solver. And we can change a couple of these, like the wave speed, um, sub-step, um, and so on and so forth. So, if we just bring a couple of these down, uh, we just kind of mess around a little bit, uh, play it back again. So, I actually went on and I found that um, these were the best settings for it. So, I only changed this one and the wave speed. Um, if we just play this back now, you'll see that it's not too crazy and it works nicely. So yeah, we got that there. We can now go back and actually change a couple of these here as well. So if we bring this down roughly around about there, we can also go back in here and we can change the fit. Um, I'm going to change this up to, I'd say, if we just play this back. I'm actually going to view it, make it a little bit easier for us. Um, I'm going to move this up to roughly around about 2.4-ish. Yeah, I think 2.4 would be fine. I'm also going to actually get rid of the amount, so I'm going to get rid of the 4 and change it to a 3. And if we go back onto the dot .network now, play it back, there's not as many there, um, and they do fade out pretty quickly, which is what we need. So the ripple effect there is fine. What we need to do now is we actually need to create it into a fluid. So to do this, what I did was I added in a scatter. Place the scatter down, and I just bumped up this by a couple of knots. So we got all the points in here. We are going to actually make this a little bit more because um, we do need more points in this. It will take our computers a little bit longer, but that's fine. Now what we need to do is we need to add in a particle a fluid surface. And if we view this now, it's going to be a big lump. You can kind of see them a little bit, but we are going to create the separation to around about um let's kind of look first uh, 0.02 so 0.02 seems all right but we're actually going to change the um droplet scale to 0.4 as well oh uh, 0.4 um something will look a bit weird in a second and the reason why that is i've actually forgotten to put something in before all this so we're going to bring this down here we're going to add in a transform, put it here, and we're also going to make it so the scale is around about 4 uh, on the y-axis, and this will explain a little bit more later on. If I quickly do it, 4. Should bring the geometry down a little bit, so we got a bit more of an indent, just like so. So... At the moment, four is probably way too much. Um, the reason why none of these are connecting here is because we actually need to up the points. But I'm going to first of all add in a smooth. I'm going to put that in between the transform and the scatter. And I'm going to up the filter to roughly around about five. So you can still see these points here. And that is mostly because we need to up our scatter points. Um, so if we go into the scatter now, and if we just change this to, I don't know, another zero on, it will affect it quite a lot, but um, it will fill in those gaps. Okay, so I'm going to change the transform node down a little bit. Uh, I'm probably going to go to two, because that is a little crazy uh, for what we've got there, and we don't really need that as much. Okay, so um, to actually get rid of those um, holes, I actually came down to the droplet scale. 
and I just bumped it up a little bit. I put it to uh, 0.6. I believe it was 0.3 before, uh, and that seemed to have got rid of all the um, the holes, which is great. Um, I did add in a camera as well, and if we just play this back now. Okay, so um, I skipped it ahead a little bit, and as you can see, we have our ripple effects here. Uh, to make these a little bit more extreme, um, if that's the word, come up to the transform node, and we change the scale to four. Okay, so you can see the indent a little bit better now. Um, you see it kind of on the edge here as well. But that is basically it. I have noticed there's a little hole there, which we could just go back into the particle fluid and up this a little bit if we wanted to um, but I'm quite happy with that if you guys want to see a tutorial video with rain coming down as well and then creating these splashes um, just send me a message saying you want to see that um, it probably will be coming underneath the third years tier just because it's a bit more advanced than what we've just showed you now but um, yeah Hopefully this helps you guys out and I will see you in the next tutorial.